self-euthanasia and does it set us back karmically? So welcome to our sister mother Diana. So lovely and delightful to talk to you again, even if it's like this. So at the first thing we have to do is to uh, make the very important distinction between euthanasia and suicide. Suicide is when there is the person has reached the depths of no of hopelessness, of no hope. So they may be ill, they may be uh, you know may have mental health issues and so on. They may uh, there are so many reasons why somebody might be financial and so on with the suicide. But suicide is really something where there is hopelessness has totally invaded the being. Euthanasia, on the other hand, is a conscious, adult, mature, balanced decision that your life, as it was, due to illness, can no longer sustain, be sustained. And that's a very important distinction. It might seem like semantics, but it's very important. Because the people that euthanize, they may have depression, they may have mental health issues, they may uh, have physical issues and so on. But they're not here because of hopelessness and they just simply can't go on anymore. They are at this point of euthanasia because they have realized that whilst they might <coughs> energetically or spiritually be able to go on, their physical body <coughs> has not the same uh, expiry date or uh, will. So euthanasia is very much about a, it's also a collaborative affair. Very few people make the euthanasia decision on their own. They would generally make it known that this is where they're at, what they're going to do. They would discuss it with uh, their medical professions, their families and so on. When I get to this point, this is what I'm going to do. I am at this point. I can see that my body is totally failing. I do not see myself in this light, this way living, and so on and so on. The person who suicides doesn't always go and seek the advice on how to kill themselves from the medical profession or discuss it with their family and so on. Generally, they do this in secret. They do it in a way that uh, nobody can, um, you know, stop them, or in some cases they do it and make sure that somebody can stop them. Uh, so that's, it's very important to understand that distinction. When somebody suicides, then... Uh, there is going to be there are going to be repercussions that filter through not just their own um, akash and their own existence and their own DNA, but that is going to filter through down the line, back the line, and of course across the line for the people that are here still and how they cope with that and how they deal with that. And the important thing, again, about suicide is that it's often a shock. It's often uh, for the people that are around. It's not a planned thing. They're not part of the uh, decision-making process or the, uh, the end of the person's life. Euthanasia, on the other hand, is, as we said, something that is generally planned. It involves other people. Uh, often family members are there when it ends. They have preparation. They know that it's going to happen. They have come to a level of acceptance. 
In this way, it is honouring the individual and their choice. Not only is it honouring the individual and their choice, it is honouring the people that are around them. It is honouring the uh, previous generations and the, the generations to come. Again, there is a difference between euthanasia and suicide in the, uh, in the application of it, if you like. And when you're talking, if you like, karmically or how it's going to affect uh, others, euthanasia is, could be considered a mature uh, look, if you like, or a mature action of a human being. Most human beings are so fearful of death, they are frightened of dying, that they put themselves into situations and their families put them and the medical profession put them into situations which are worse than death. They put them into uh, situations where they are being uh, kept on life support. They have to be bathed. They have to be... Uh, all of their bodily fluids are uh, looked after, if you like, for them. They have no privacy. They have no dignity. They have no uh, place. They have no input into what is happening. It's the same thing when we place elderly people who are uh, literally degrading in front of our eyes with their ulcers on their skin. Their skin can no longer hold its integrity. Their organs are failing. Their mind is failing. Their sight, their vision, their taste, all of their senses are eroding away. And yet we keep these people alive because we have a fear of death. We have a fear of uh of karmic repercussions. We have a fear. But if these people were able to make a decision before they got to this stage that says, when my skin integrity breaks down completely, when all of my senses are uh, no longer active, when I have to be uh, fed, toileted, bathed, dressed, turned over in my bed, when I'm no longer living the life of a human being with purpose and meaning, please, allow me to euthanize. Allow this process to occur. Everybody knows it has been discussed and decided. There are people involved with this uh, individual's interests at heart. There are uh, laws in place. There are standards and so on. When this sort of environment exists, humans actually stand up tall and make that leap. So, yes, with euthanasia, there is going to be uh, karmic, uh, if you like. Of course, we don't believe in this concept of karma, but uh, obviously you do and others do, so we will use that term. Of course, there is going to be uh, consequences or uh, repercussions. But in the situation of euthanasia, it's more likely to be a balanced, mature understanding than with suicide, which is shock, distress, trauma, and so on. We hope that's answered your question somewhat. Thank you.